I always get so nervous when I get to a deadline, but for whatever reason, I seem to be finishing most of these with time to spare, which is not normal. <laughs> Welcome back to the Skill Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. It's episode 97 of What's on the Bench Weekly. We gotta do something special for the 100th episode, I think. Welcome to the show. If you are not familiar with this show, it's where I take you through the projects that I'm working on. Lots of things that are on the bench, lots of tips, tricks, styrene work, 3D printing, painting, weathering, all kinds of great stuff on this show. And if you are not subscribed, you should definitely subscribe to this channel. And hit the like button and subscribe like it first thing on the bench today this is the uh this is the rc four-wheel drive extra cab toyota body i've made some changes mostly thanks to turks and jerps for uh putting me on the right path to making sure this was more accurate extra cab body because rc four-wheel drive chose to not look at one when they made it <laughs> which is fine that's fine you don't have to make these changes but for the sake of accuracy and for the sake of doing some fun stuff with styrene i'm doing it uh, in the last episode, we had already done this fender uh, trim, which got rid of that weird shelf that was on the front leading edge there. So that's all been fixed. Uh, we've got some styrene slurry in there now to smooth out that whole transition. Uh, we did the hood modification, so it sits flush to the edge, which is good. You want to have that. <laughs> um, the next step for this portion is to uh, put in a wedge in here so we have a nice straight line between the hood line and the actual fender line because this does not taper in it's supposed to be straight so we're gonna have to fix that uh, and then I've also started doing the cut doors because I decided I wanted to do a cut door on these ones uh, I think it's looking pretty good so far this is a very simple thing to do this is not challenging in terms of styrene work um, and I wish I had taken more photos or actually filmed the process of this but you know like there's so much moving of the body and repositioning and cutting and shifting I actually did use my Proxon rotary tool which is not a Dremel so it will not get away from you uh, to make some of these cuts. Uh, of course, I measure out the angles and everything that I want uh, with just a ruler and a pencil. Once I've got a pretty good idea of where I want those cuts to be, the door is obviously off the rest of the body. Uh, and I actually, the inner cards are also cut, as you can see. But um, what I do is I do it sort of at one stage at a time. I'll cut the door first, uh, just very careful cuts, three of them should be fairly obvious and then I trace out the same shape after putting the door card on so I put the door card on the, the door trace out the shape again take the door card off cut those pieces out and then uh, glue everything back together and add some styrene strip to fill the gap and that's a cut door for you uh, they are supposed to look a little raw that's the the point it's not a well done cut because the body that I'm referencing for this is pretty beat up and pretty gnarly and uh, I can't wait to show you that example yeah maybe we'll throw it up on this side yeah it'll be right there <laughs> and uh, my friend Hanny found that example uh, at King of Hammers this year would there be a more perfect example no I think it's absolutely great I cannot wait I've never done a pink truck before I think it'll be pretty fun uh, so yeah that's the inspiration for that uh, I was also thinking about doing a t-top because uh, I've done that before. T-tops are fun. Uh, I did it on an old Toyota build like probably 15 years ago now. Um, so yeah, we'll do that again, I think. That'll be kind of funny and weird and different and uh, not at all expected, but super easy. Those are easy cuts as well. And uh, that one I'll film <laughs> so you can see what that looks like. Uh, there are a few more other details that need to be corrected all of these body lines here this is all wrong uh, they don't have this in real life it's all sort of flat i think that was just a trick of the light <laughs> off the photos that the designers were using so uh, we'll fix that up as well and then this one will be ready for paint probably uh, i still have to figure out the interior 
uh, but the mounting system is all ready to go. That's going to be fine. I think I'm going to try to use the original interior, uh, which I've got right over here. Um, it's a nice looking interior. Uh, it's already got a lot of decals on it because this I, I bought this body secondhand. Uh, but we'll figure out a way to make all of this work. This should be fine. Let's see why it wouldn't be. Where's this go? There we go. Yeah, that'll work. That'll look nice, actually. That'll be good. That'll be good. Not a full depth interior, but close enough. We'll have to do some trimming to get around the VFD. Uh, but I'm not too worried about that. I think that'll look fine. Yeah, nice. All right, on to the next thing. PSA for the week. Don't be afraid of styrene work. It's super easy to do, especially when you have all the right tools. Uh, I've done many videos on building with styrene. There's a good intro. I will link to it right up here. Uh, my best favorite new trick, and it comes into play on this next build, is styrene slurry. Um, what you do is you cut up a bunch of scraps of styrene, put it in a glass container with a sealable lid, add some MEK or MEK substitute, and you end up with this beautiful mixture uh, I can't really give you exact um, amounts, but you end up with this beautiful mixture, and this looks like it's a little thin, actually, so I'll probably add a little more styrene or let it dry out a little bit. Uh, but then you get this beautiful slurry. This is just styrene dissolved in a liquid. That is the same liquid you use to bond styrene together. So it makes a perfect filler because it's styrene. You can sand it, shape it, everything, just like you would regular styrene. Uh, and it uh, fills gaps and makes things a lot stronger. So um, I would highly recommend you start getting your scraps together and make yourself a jar of slurry. Uh, and that all came into play on the Land Cruiser body right here, uh, which you can see is pretty much exactly the same from the outside, uh, but it's all on the inside that changes have been made. And in fact, actually uh, on this side, you can see I filled in that gap on the hood that was missing there, or bonnet, if you will. So that was a piece of styrene backing, a little piece of thicker styrene, and then slurry to fill in all the gaps. And you can see it's done a pretty darn good job. Um, it might need a little more work sanding wise, and we'll have to contour some of those body lines back in, but that's how that's supposed to work, and it did. The body's a lot more rigid now as well because I've added all of the screws, all let's count them 62 screws in here it's a lot of screwing <laughs> i've uh but here's where that styrene slurry comes into play you can see i've filled all the gaps in between all the body panels uh, and the prints on the inside uh, what that does is it actually will push a little bit of that material outside so you get a nice solid bond between all of these panel gaps and uh what would that now that that's there it's going to be a much more solid, rigid piece that I can actually go in and sand all these edges so it gets nice and smooth. Uh, it's a perfect way to keep a body like this that was printed in ABS. That's sort of the main thing here is if you're printing in anything else other than ABS, the styrene slurry won't work uh, because it's ABS based and needs to have the same kind of material to bond to. Uh, but yeah, um, this is all looking really great so far. We'll do the same thing on the outside probably. A nice smooth uh, styrene slurry in between some of these not supposed to be panel gaps. Like this outside one here. That's just a seam between the two pieces that were printed. So we'll clean that up. There's a few little minor inconsistencies in some of the body lines as well. So we'll clean that up. And there was a bit of an error on this print back here, as you can see. Uh, a little bit of an error on the back there, as you can see. That'll all get filled in with some styrene slurry as well. But this is coming along nicely. Uh, I'm really uh, looking forward to uh, getting this one done. Uh, sort of like I said, I want it to be sort of a quick build. So we'll see how quick that actually becomes. Especially considering I'm, I'm away this weekend at a big event. Uh, and uh, then I've got Proline by the Fire coming up. So, will this be ready for that? Who knows? <laughs> All right, on to the next thing. And finally, for this episode, I am thrilled to present my finished CUCV. Here it is. It's all done. Three years later, I cannot believe it took me this long. I'm, I'm upset with myself. <laughs> but here it is. I really am quite pleased with how this turned out. 
It's a pretty faithful recreation of a Canadian CUCV, which predated all of the American ones. This was sort of the test bed that GM was doing to see if this was even a viable candidate for a military vehicle. And while the US ones have the 6.2 liter diesel, this has a 350 V8. That's just how they were made. I am not making that up. That is for realsies. That's how they were. Anyway, getting all of the detail stuff out of the way, let's go on to some more details. Since the previous episode, there hasn't been a lot of exterior cosmetic changes. However, I did add this whip antenna, uh, which has a little uh, metal holder, which is fairly accurate. I found one on a blazer uh, that had something pretty similar to this whole setup here. Uh, and uh, recreated it on this one. Not all of them, I think, I think, in fact, not any of them had a whip antenna on a CUCV, but I liked it. And I was like, I'm gonna do it. Uh, also designed and printed the, the rear portion of it, um, which is sort of hard to focus on. Let's see if we can get there. Yeah, that works. Uh, it's got a little like spring mechanism and it's 3D printed and then I just uh, drilled it into the sides of the bed, which I thought looked pretty realistic. I'm happy with that. Um, it's also, of course, got a lights now. So we've got our tail lights working, which look pretty darn good. Uh, the incandescent bulbs, the grain of rice bulbs, just really add a period correct warmth to the lights uh, and uh, you can see that on the front here as well we've got the marker lights done and then the headlights have that nice warm glow it's absolutely perfect uh, really really happy with how that turned out uh, engine bay was done weeks ago uh, i've added some metal wipers which a little hard to see because they are kind of obscured by this giant hood uh, but they're there and uh, they're pretty accurate as well uh, they came from Amazon. Richard found these and uh, I was happy to steal the info for those. They're from a place called Model Bow. And they're actually the 14th scale ones, which looked a lot better than the 10th scale ones on this body. So uh, you can get those on Amazon. I don't know what you would search for. What would you search for? One pair RC Universal Metal Windscreen Wipers. That would do. The interior's finished. I put a little magazine on the dashboard. Uh, that's really cute. I'm all done too. I'm all painted up and a little hard to see in there. I'll get some B-roll. I'll take the camera off the tripod there and get some B-roll of me. Uh, but I did paint all my tattoos, which I'm very pleased with. They turned out really good. And uh, yeah, you'll see those in the cutaway that I'm filming right now. Um, yeah, mirrors are on. I've got an exhaust on there now too. I added an actual like exhaust pipe that runs full length of the under, underside. So yeah, it's all done. It's ready to drive. And uh, oh yeah, I forgot my head turns as well. Let's see if you can see that. Yeah, cute. Whee. I'm looking left and right. I didn't do a moving steering wheel, I just didn't have the time to dedicate to making that happen. But uh, overall I'm really quite pleased with this build and uh, I hope that people like it as much as I do. Oh, uh, yeah, the, uh, the markings on the front there, I saw another Canadian example that had these. That's a bridge plate so you know uh, how heavy your truck is so people who see you coming to go over a bridge can tell you whether or not you are going to break that bridge. And then this is some sort of... Uh, Engineering core, uh, NATO specific uh, markings. And uh, yeah, it was on one of the models I saw. So I put it on this one. Yeah, that's it. I'm really happy with this though. Not one that I'm going to be quick to sell, I don't think. Considering it took me three years, I'll probably want to keep it for at least that long so I can just look at it and appreciate it. But there you go. All done, ready to drive. Looking forward to that. I will be doing a members only video from that event. So if you are not, you should consider a channel membership. There's all kinds of behind the scenes, how to's, tips and tricks, and uh, general fun content that you don't get to see unless you are a member of this special club. 
So I'll be sure to put a link down below to check that out. And of course, if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builders Guild. I am looking forward to this event. It's going to be fun. It's going to be hot, but uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to seeing all my friends. And if you're there, come and say hi. All right. Uh, oh, uh, there will also be new bumper stickers coming very soon for this summer. So uh, be sure to keep your eyes peeled to all the social media channels. I'll have those out and available very soon. All the information on how to order will be in posts. So no need to ask here. What's the longest you've ever spent on a build? Put a comment down below. You know I love reading through your feedback and I try to answer as many of those comments as I can. And of course, if you haven't already, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builder Guild. All right, I think that's gonna do it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great weekend and we'll see you again next week.